All right, so we put the aftermarket highway pop-up piston in it after the stock one when we still had the base gasket in and retimed it and it came out exactly the same so kudos to highway for getting those measurements right on anyways we also had squish of 36 thousandths I believe 38 somewhere around there and this base gasket is right at 20. So we'll do a squish test and then we'll also retime it. So we'll do a little quick squish check with. no base gasket and the sealer that I'll use around the base it doesn't add a ton but it'll add it usually add one or two thousandths maybe up at 18 on the exhaust side which makes sense we were at 38 I think and that gasket's about 20,000 so the math adds up we know we're not doing anything drastically wrong That gives us 4590, 95, 100, and 4. So that makes sense. About 20 thousandths, give or take a saw this size with this stroke. About 10 thousandths is usually equals one degree of timing. Not exact, but just a general reference. So we dropped the cylinder 20 thousandths, gained two degrees on our exhaust timing. That all makes sense. The exhaust is at 104 now, which is right where we'll leave it. He's looking to run a 24 inch 3 8 bar on this so we'll take every advantage we can get and keeping a torquey saw so as far as the intake goes we are now 69 degrees before top dead center so we went from 102 to 104 on the exhaust and from 67 to 69 degrees on the intake which is moving both in the right direction for the type of saw that we're building. We want the torque from the lower exhaust group. We'll gain some RPM back with just widening the port. And we're also gaining more intake timing. Since the exhaust port dropped two degrees in timing and the intake equally moved two degrees in the timing with getting rid of the base gasket, the upper transfer ports, also moved two degrees. So at this point, I don't bother pulling it off, putting the ring in, retiming the transfers. This moved two degrees, and this moved two degrees, and those upper transfers moved two degrees also. So in regards to finding how many thousands you have to go 
to equal one degree. It's really pretty simple math, figuring it out with a stroke, but the down and dirty super easy way is just to roll your piston to a given spot. And have your degree wheel set, say on, sorry, 60. Come back over to the intake. Take a scribe. And no, I can't find my scribe, so yes, I'm using a tester. But same difference. Just lightly scribe the bottom of that intake port on the piston. It really doesn't take much. Then, roll your piston up, say, 10 degrees. So now our timing wheel marker is on 70 and scribe another point. At that intake floor again. So then when you remove the jug, what you end up with are two scribe lines. Try and get this in without being too shaky here. You can see the two lines here and here. There you go. Right there and right there, there's two lines. So, measure that distance with your calipers. Figure out how many thousandths of an inch that is. Since we moved it 10 degrees, divide it by 10. And that tells you how many thousandths per degree you need to go when it comes to moving your ports. So. Take our calipers and measure. Ninety five thousandths. So, simple math tells us that's nine point five thousandths, which is close enough to ten in my world. And we kind of already knew that by removing 20 thousandths and gaining two degrees. That means one degree per 10 thousandths. It's kind of a rough guesstimate, but then you actually do the math, measure it, and you come up with the same. But if you weren't getting rid of the gasket and you wanted to know, that's an easy way to do it without figuring out the rod length and everything else. So, Talk about plans for this saw. These 350s have this bearing cap cylinder bolts the same to this as it would in case on a normal saw. It has these dividers in the lower transfer area here in the case, if you will. But you'll notice the cylinder. is a closed port cylinder. I don't know if you can see that, but anyways, it's flat across here. There's no divider. I mean, up in there there is, but at the base there isn't. So, my best guess is it's a holdover from earlier style cylinders that were open port. And they had a runner that went all the way up the open transfer ports. So, think about it. Makes sense that this, let's see if I can get this for you here. Anyways, this point here, that, that runner inside, 
would line up with that divider right there. Right here. But since our new cylinder does not have that, I will be removing this out of there. I'll be taking, sorry it's so shaky, I'll be taking this piece out so it's smooth right through here. Then, inside the lower transfers on the saw, I'll be removing material here and reshaping that a little. I'll be taking this hump out here and reshaping this a little. And then on these saws, you look, and if you look at the witness line, you can see there's room to take material away right here. You have to be careful, though, because if you take too much material away from this section, you can round it a little bit to help flow down through here. But if you take too much off right here and try and radius the whole thing to match the gasket, you end up getting into this corner right here. There's just not enough room to radius this whole thing and not punch through out into here. And this is where that outer transfer cover sits usually. So you'll try and radius that and you'll end up with an air leak right there. So just a cautionary measure, but I only round, round off this ridge and this ridge, or bevel if you will. I don't actually take material from here. Hope that makes sense. And as far as the upper transfers go, I will end up raising them a tiny bit, but more than anything I'll shape this lower divider, shape this just a little bit here and here. And I won't get rid of this completely, but I'll taper it just a touch. And I'll put some comparisons to the 359 I did. Uh, these are very similar in design, so... Anyways, just thought I'd let you know a little bit of where my head's at, what my thoughts are with where we're going. And as far as the intake goes, I'll probably drop the floor a little bit, but I might take a little off the piston skirt as well, just to kind of even things up. And the exhaust will be staying the same height. I'll just be widening the port. And exhaust and intake will both be 65% of the bore. Kind of on the safe conservative side, but maybe I'll do a video on how to measure that. So I'm not so sure how great this will turn out for you guys, but that right there is that divider. The other part that's on the base, or what would normally be the case, is this piece right here. And if you see where the cylinder is, it follows this line down around here. So that piece on the bearing cap, or what would effectively be the case of the saw, is out in this open area where air would normally be flowing. Or air and fuel, I should say. Anyways. Not a very good view, but you get the gist, I think. Hopefully. It's all about clearing things up, making airflow. Just got to think, you know, air and fuel in, and where it has to travel, and where it has to get to, and making all those flows 
not necessarily bigger. Like, I mean, this area doesn't necessarily have to be a lot larger, but there's a lot that can be done to smooth transitions. Sharp edges around things. Parts that overlap. You know, when the cylinder sits down onto the case. There's a lot of areas on most saws in this lower region where things just don't mate up exactly. Where, like in this case, you can see where the lower transfers are in the cylinder and the gasket are all the way out here. So this whole area here is impeding flow. Now, some of that has to do with keeping these smaller and keeping velocity. But we can still taper this a tiny bit or take that corner off to help a smoother transition. Anyways, stuff to think about.